listened. I've already said that Mr. Banga is likely to be a good president of the World Bank. Today, I want to talk about a different topic related to him. He has said he's a made in India man. And I want to ask what sort of India made him the man that he is, the man who's going to be the head of the World Bank, meaning a high achiever. Let's look at him. He was born in 1951 and he started working in 1981. And by the time 1990 rolled around, he was 30 years old. And that was the time when India's economy hit bottom and we undertook economic liberalization. So he grew up at a time when India's economy was not doing well. We were a food short country when he was born and we were struggling to raise the growth rate. So it wasn't a good economy. But how could India still make him what he is if the economy was not doing well? Well, first, all of us are created by our families. Our families make us. There's no dispute about it. New research says that what happens in the ages zero to three is critical. That's what forms us. And actually in the Indian system, until you finish your high school, you're pretty much under the influence of your family and to some extent of the school that you go to, but it's still the family. When you really meet India, that's when you go to college and you go to work. So let's look at where he studied and where he worked. First, he went to St. Stephen's College in Delhi. I know the place well. I, there, I went there too, just a few years before he did. It was a college in Delhi and as a college in Delhi, it attracted people from all over India. So it was a, an Indian college. There were people from all parts of India. And you get to meet people from all the parts and that's what makes you an Indian. So the college he went to as it was in Delhi and as it attracted a lot of people made him an Indian. But it was a Christian college. Did it make him a Christian? No, it was a secular college. Like every other college in Delhi at the time, it was secular. It didn't matter what religion you were. Just across the street from St. Stephen's College was a place called the Hindu College. Was it only for Hindus? No, it was for everyone. It was just like St. Stephen's College. There was no difference whatsoever. It was equally secular. What about the colonial mindset? Wasn't St. Stephen's College formed long ago? And didn't it have a colonial mindset? No, not at all. Way back before independence, it had a teacher called C.F. Andrews, known affectionately in the college as Andrew Sahib. Andrew Sahib was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. And he went with Mahatma Gandhi to many places, fighting against the British Raj, well known in the college and not something that was ignored at all. So the college was not colonial at all. And none of us felt in any way any affinity with the British Raj or colonial ties. Yes, people spoke in English, but that was common in many colleges in Delhi. And today, a higher percentage of Indians know English and speak in English than at that time. So it was an Indian college. And the students did the same things that kids do in colleges. Some studied hard, some didn't study hard, some played cricket, some played table tennis, some acted in plays, some took part in competitions, and some just wasted their time. And not something that doesn't happen in any college at the time. So it was that college which made him an Indian. It gave him the first exposure to something that was diverse and inclusive. Next, he went to IIM Ahmedabad. Now, people say that nothing happened in those days, but they did create IIM Ahmedabad in the early 1960s as a premier MBA institution in India. Even today, 
we are making copies of IIM Ahmedabad, but they're copies, not the original. And everybody knows the difference between the original and the copies. And I know the place well because my older brother, just a couple of years older than me, and we are very close, went there too. And it's also India. There are people from all over India. There, the students, the teachers, everybody, it's all Indian. It's all circular. And they turn out great products. Look at Mr. Banka. He is a great product of IIM Ahmedabad. He went to work in 1981. According to Wikipedia, he went to work for Nestle. And Nestle was a foreign company. But it was operating in India for a long time. And people thought of those companies as pretty much Indian. For example, everybody thought Bata is Indian, but Bata was actually a foreign company. So there were many foreign companies at the time, but they had been operating in India a long time and they looked Indian, they felt Indian. And that was the kind of work that Mr. Banga did. He worked for them, for Nestle and for several other companies. I don't know all the names, but he worked there more than 10 years. So in short, the India that Mr. Banga grew up in was not a prosperous, well-off India. Certainly not. We didn't have a high growth rate. But it was an India that could still create highly talented, highly qualified people who would go on to become world-class leaders. So we had a lot of strength. Our educational institutions were solid and strong. Not our economy, but our educational institutions were solid and strong. And our social values were solid and strong. And that was the India that created Mr. Banga. And I'm glad that it created Mr. Banga because today we are proud that he's going to be the next president of the World Bank. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. Till then, bye.